Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. Now we're going to follow along and ask the question, did the Apostle Paul ever acknowledge Peter as Pope? Now, this becomes very important because I want you to download the chronology that goes along with these series of sermons so that you can see the chronology from the Bible based upon the true facts of when Jesus was crucified. Now, if you don't have our book, The Appointed Times of Jesus the Messiah, you need to write for it. We'll send it to you. Likewise, with the book, Judaism, a revelation of Moses or a religion of men. Both of those are absolutely important for you to understand. Now, we have many other books. We have many other articles. We have many other booklets. We are loaded with so many things concerning the truth of the Bible that what you have on cbcg.org and Church at Home has more information that will teach you the Word of God that is greater than any Bible college. And it's straight from the Bible. So let's come to the book of Romans, written by the Apostle Paul in 57 AD. Now keep that in mind. Because if Peter were the Pope in Rome, then the Apostle Paul ignominiously refused to mention him. Well, that's astounding. So, let's read certain parts of the book of Romans written in 57 AD from Corinth. And remember this. Paul was specifically called to be the apostle to the Gentiles, not Peter. He writes this to those in Rome. Verse 7, To all those who are in Rome, beloved by God, to called saints, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8, First, I truly thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, for your faith is spoken of in the whole world. Now, what I want you to do is listen carefully. Is there any acknowledgement of Peter? Let's go on. Verse 9, For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit, in the gospel of his Son, how unceasingly I mention you in my prayers, always beseeching, if by any means I shall now be prospered by the will of God to come to you at last. Now, if Peter were there, wouldn't he have said that Peter brought you the gospel? But remember, Peter could not have gone to Rome because he was a Jew. Now, granted by 57 AD, the Edict of Claudius was ended because Nero became emperor at that time and the Jews and Christians came back into Rome. So let's go forward with this. Verse 11, For I am longing to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift in order that you may be established. Question. If Peter were the apostle in Rome, why weren't they established? The answer, Peter was never in Rome. So Paul was the one to go do this. Let's continue on. Verse 13, I do not wish you to be ignorant, brethren, that many times I proposed to come to you, but I was hindered until the present, in order that I might also have some fruit among you, even as I have among the other Gentiles. No mention of Peter. An amazing thing, isn't it? Yes, indeed. All right. Let's come here to chapter 15. 
Now, chapter 15 becomes very, very important to understand. And this proves that Peter was never in Rome, and Peter was never the first pope. Now, every chart and things that the Roman Catholic Church puts out should begin with Constantine as the first pope, as we covered last time. He was Pontifex Maximus, the head of the pagan religion, and what happened at that time, Mithraism was embraced as Christianity, and true Christianity was rejected. And so that's what we have today in Roman Catholicism and Protestantism, a form of Mithraism, which is another Jesus, another Christ, another gospel. Now, Romans 15, verse 15. So then I have more boldly written to you, brethren, in part as a way of reminding you because of the grace that was given to me by God, in order that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles to perform the holy service of teaching the gospel of God. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Gentiles were in Rome. All other nations, other than those of Israel, are called Gentiles. Peter never went to the Gentiles, with the exception of Cornelius, so that it would be established that God had done that, and we already covered that. Let's go forward here. Paul writes, so that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I have cause for boasting in Christ Jesus as to things pertaining to God. So he's giving God all of the credit. He's saying he's been wanting to come to them, but he's been delayed, deferred, couldn't get there. Now, let's read the next verse. Verse 18 becomes the coup de grace, another blow of the axe to the roots of the false tree of Catholicism and Protestantism. Now, that may sound astounding to you that someone would say that, but when you look at the Bible and you read the Bible and you understand what it says, all of the claims of Catholicism fall like a tree cut down at the roots, and you will see that every one of their doctrines are pagan to the core. Now, is that astonishing to you? How and why do people let men fool them, lie to them, cheat them, bring a lie? Because it appeals to their deceitful human nature. Now let's read on. Mark verse 18, Paul writes, For I will not presume to speak about anything that Christ has not worked out by me for the obedience of the Gentiles through word and work. Now then, if Paul had been in Rome, then he would have been obligated to acknowledge Peter and his work. But he didn't. Let's read on. Through the power of signs and wonders and the power of the Spirit of God, so that in a circuit from Jerusalem to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now the next verse is utterly astounding. Read it. And indeed, I've aspired to preach the gospel of Christ where the name of Christ was not known, so that I might not build on another's foundation. Question. If Peter were ever in Rome, and Paul was coming there, he would have been building on the foundation of Peter. 
and the gospel would have already been preached by an apostle in Rome. But it couldn't have been preached in Rome because Peter could not have gone to Rome in 42 AD. Impossible. He was in the area of Judea, and his last place in Judea was in Jerusalem in 44 AD, and he went from there to Babylon, as the first epistle of Peter shows. Let me read it again. This is so important. And indeed, I, Paul, have aspired to preach the gospel of Christ where the name of Christ was not known, so that I might not build on another's foundation. Peter was never in Rome. Paul never acknowledged him. Let's read on. Verse 21, But even as it is written, those to whom he has not been proclaimed shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. For this reason also I have been hindered many times from coming to you. But now there is no place in these regions that have not heard the gospel, and having a great desire to come to you for many years. There you have it. Peter was never in Rome. This is important because the whole foundation of Roman Catholicism has fallen, and the whole structure and the whole tree is going to crash to the ground at the return of Jesus Christ. Now, God is giving us a choice. God is calling. God is calling you to the truth if you will receive it. God is calling you to repentance if you are willing. God is calling you to obedience if you love God and want to keep His commandments. God never was, never will be, and has had nothing to do with Roman Catholicism. Protestantism is a slight improvement, but when they had the truth, they never embraced the Sabbath and holy days of God, and just like the Bible says, what they had has been taken from them, and now Protestantism is coming home to Rome. What about you? What will you do? How do you stand before God? No, for sure. All the claims to the contrary. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. It does not come through a corporate structure of a corporate church. It is a special calling by God the Father and Jesus Christ. Now, you need to understand that. Now, let's continue on here. He said, and having a great desire to come to you for many years. And he did not say, though in the time that I've been wanting to come for many years, Peter has been there to serve you. Hmm. Verse 24, Paul writes, whenever I may go to Spain, I will come to you because I hope to see you while passing through Rome, and from there to be sent forward to you after I have enjoyed your company for a while. Then he said that he has to go to Jerusalem first. Now, in all the salutations, and you can read it, in chapter 16, Paul does not say, Salute Peter, our first pope. He does not say it. The first pope was Constantine, 325 A.D. Now then, let's come to Acts, the 28th chapter again. Now this will make even more sense to you than when we covered it earlier. Acts 28. Now remember how Paul got to Rome. He got there as a prisoner. And when he got there, it was about 60 A.D. So the Jews had come back into Rome, and there were many Christians there. 
And when he got there, he was allowed to be in a prison home where he could have all the visitors and all the people come to him. Now let's pick it up here in verse 16. And when we came to Rome, this is Luke writing concerning Paul and the whole company there, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the commander of the camp, but Paul was allowed to remain by himself with the soldier who kept him. Now it came to pass after three days, so three days after arriving in Rome as a prisoner, but he had this extraordinary freedom. And I think that's interesting because what was happening with this was God was protecting the apostle Paul from all the enemies, and he had the time to write the different epistles. And that's why you go through the chronology and you see when he wrote the epistles, to whom he wrote them. And this becomes very important for you to understand. It doesn't say that Paul sent for Peter. Paul called together those who were chief among the Jews. He didn't call for Peter because Peter wasn't there. And when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, although I have done nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, I was delivered into the hands of the Romans as a prisoner from Jerusalem. And after examining me, they desired to let me go, because there was not one cause of death in me. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not as though I had done anything to charge against my nation. So he was explaining to them how he got to Rome and why he was a prisoner. Now, don't you think that if Peter was there, he would have asked for Peter to come and visit him? But he didn't, did he? He sent for the Jewish leaders. Now then, since Peter was the apostle to the circumcision, why... Didn't they say, we know all about this because Peter has been here all this time? But that is a great lie because Peter could not have been there all that time because of the edict by Claudius from 41 to 54 AD. No Jews. Let's see what the Apostle Paul said to the Jews when they came. For this cause, then, I have called for you in order to see you and speak to you, because it is for the hope of Israel that I have this chain around me. Then they said to him, now mark very carefully what they said. We have neither received letters concerning you from Judea, nor have any of the brethren who have arrived reported anything or spoken evil of you. Now then, would they not have said, Look, you're a little late. We're glad you've come. But Peter's been here all the time. And we know all about Christianity because the apostle Peter is our pope. So here's what they told Paul verse 22, but we would like to hear from you and to know what you think, because we are indeed very aware that this sect is everywhere spoken against. And when they appointed a day for him to speak, many came to his lodging to hear him, and he expounded to them from morning until evening, fully testifying the kingdom of God and persuading them of the things concerning Jesus both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Now notice this, because none of them were converted. You need to think about that very deeply. These are the Jewish leaders in Rome, and some were truly convinced of the things that were spoken, but some did not believe. And they departed in disagreement with one another after Paul had spoken these words. So here's Paul's final warning to them. Notice, Peter, again, is nowhere in the mix. 
Well did the Holy Spirit speak by Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, In hearing you shall hear in no way understanding, and seeing you shall see in no way perceive. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul did. Some few believed him, the others didn't. For the heart of this people has grown fat, and their ears are dull of hearing, and they have closed their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Now, question, I want to ask you a question. Do you fit into the same group as these Jews? Have you closed your eyes to the truth? Have you stopped your ears from hearing the truth? Do you want to be told lies, myths, and fairy tales as Christianity of this world really dishes out? Where do you stand? Well, unless you believe God, unless you believe the Word of God, unless you believe the truth of God, you stand on the outside. And you're not even able to look in because God has to open your eyes and open your heart, and you have to repent to God. And that's why there's repentance in baptism. See, it's not a matter of joining a church. It's not a matter of finding a building where they supposedly worship God. It's not a matter of going to a cathedral or a church and taking the communion and bowing down before an idol and bang, you all of a sudden, you're feeling really, really good. That is a false delusion given by Satan the devil. That's not of God. And this whole world has gone so far from God, it is incredible. And most people have their eyes overladen with lies and myths that they don't even want to understand the truth. So I will also use the Apostle Paul's words to finish this. Be it known to you that the salvation of God has therefore been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear. And after saying these things, the Jews went away with much debate among themselves. Peter was never in Rome. The whole structure of lies and misinterpretations of the Roman Catholic Church have been proven to be utterly wrong. Peter was never the first pope. The first pope was Emperor Constantine in 325 AD, and he brought in Mithraism, and he established Sunday, and he made himself, as head of the church, Pontifex Maximus. Peter was never in Rome. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. Be sure and get our books. Be sure and download the material that we have on our home page. Be sure and get the chronology of the book of Acts. And if you want to get the Holy Bible in its original order, you go right online at Church at Home, and that will give you the instructions on how you can obtain one. So in the meantime, until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone. 